Yay, we're live again. Woo, what a week. It has been a day, 10 days since the new year and just wanted to do another little quick coaching section session on uh, goal setting. Hey, Jay McDeasy. Hi, everyone. Um, hope you brought your planners. We'll make this a quick one. Wanted to invite you guys to set goals for this week. Um, we're 10 days into the new year, so you'll start to now see what works and what doesn't. Hey, postpartum diaries. Um, hopefully that you've kept track of what your goals were and what, where you are in your Clever Fox planner. It's so funny. I've had so many people ask about these since I've made my last post and, um, I actually got a new one. I remember I had that bright blue one. This is a kind of sky blue one. I had the daily one and I realized after that first post that the daily one was a little too overwhelming for me. So I ended up getting a different one and I thought, um, hi fellow humans, hey Jay McDeasy. Um, I thought that I would get the new one but I accidentally this time got a pro, uh, which I'm actually really glad that I got because one, the stickers are amazing. They're way different than the other one. They have like all different kinds of fun uh, stickers with like really cool, um, I don't know, there's some affirmations and stuff like too blessed to be stressed, it's a good week to have a good week, new Monday, new week, new goals. So there's lots of cool little things in the pro that I'm excited about. I actually was really excited because there's a warranty card. I can refund my other one that I didn't like, no hassle. So I'm going to do that. And um, I hope you guys got yours. I hope you have your planners with you. Let's get to it. What I want to do in here is uh, invite maybe some guests to, if you're willing, to be a little bit vulnerable and tell us what your goals were, what worked, what didn't. If you are, then request to join so that I can say okay or maybe say down below and I will invite you to join so we can see your little face and we can do this together. So I actually wanted to share my, uh, in my in the Clever Fox Planner, if you do your main goal of the week, it says reward if you do it. What happens for your reward if you do it? And remember in my first one, I talked about how sidecar donuts are my reward. So my reward, my, my goal this week was to maintain consistency. And what that means is everything that I write in, I maintain, I make sure that I stayed consistent in it because I want at least two good weeks of habit building so that I can make it a habit and I really want to like hone in this year on that or at least this month on that because I want to get rid of some bad habits that I had in the last year. So my reward was sidecar donuts which I got um, and this is a Meyer lemon one. This is a chocolate one. They have really amazing donuts and they're fresh and hot and delicious and they make gluten free ones and vegan ones. Oh they're so good. So I have my reward because I did stay consistent. So I hope you guys have celebrated your wins and gotten yourself a reward because it makes you want to continue to set better goals. So here we go. Um, I guess what we'll do is start off with what worked and what didn't work for last week. So at the end of mine, let's see, where am I? Here we are. You can see I have all of my, um, these are all the clients that I had. These are all of my goals for the day that I filled in from last week. I have my cool little, um, you know, there's my date night. I had an endos endoscopy on Friday, which was an interesting experience. Over here, I filled in consistency for my main goal. Sidecar Donuts was my reward. I have my work to-do list. I have my uh, personal to-do list. I did my, um, what does this say? This week's priorities. You notice that I crossed every single one of them off. I was so excited. Remember I said um, at the beginning of this year, I wanted to start to meditate because I suck at it. So um, every week I'm going to increase by one minute. This last week I did one minute every single day, which actually was really easy. I didn't really have any aha moments with it, but I did it. So I crossed all those off. My next one was one push up a day. I definitely did that. Uh, I ate paleo all week. I was so proud of myself. So I definitely get my sidecar donuts. I worked out every single day. I had my pre-input wins, and remember what we talked about with pre-input wins means um, that space between waking up in the morning 
where your brain is fresh and there's no ex external out, uh, input getting into your brain, you want to make that window before you pick up any input. You want to make that as long as you can. So I call it my pre-input wins. That space in the morning when I wake up to the time that I pick up my phone or I turn on the news is really long. It's like an hour and a half. And so that was one of my main goals this last week was a pre-input win. And um, to make sure that you don't, you know, have to respond to ex to external input. You want to use that first morning space to you to get to the inner part, the most creative part of who you are, and write down stuff. You know, because you're like we talked about in that first session, your brain is like a snow globe, and when you go to sleep, it's been all it's been jostled all day, and it kind of settles throughout the nighttime when you get some sleep, and when you wake up in the morning, it's settled, and you want to wait as long as you can to have things external come into your brain, come into your world, and um, output as much as you can before you input. So it's amazing. That's my favorite time in the morning is my pre-input wins. And um, I did a lot of journaling this week. I did a lot of uh, cooking in the morning. My meditation, my one push-up was in there. I did it. It was not difficult. Um, and it was nice and I feel great about it at the end of the week. So hopefully you guys did your goals for the week. If you didn't, I want to invite you this time to set open goals. And I just read an article about this and I'm going to add that in my goals this week is to set open goals is we always hear about smart goals, which is, um, you know, specific, measurable, attainable, uh, re uh, reasonable, I want to say, and time oriented. So like walking 10,000 steps a day is a smart goal because it's specific, it's attainable, it's reasonable, it's time oriented, you want to do that a day. Um, but this article is talking about open goals. And what it's what it does is it helps your psychology in the sense that it doesn't bring any shame when you don't reach the actual goal you're intending. And I talk about this with my coaching clients. There's the best version of yourself, which is called arete in, in Greek. Arete is your best version of yourself. And at all moments, you are trying to reach arete in every single moment, moment to moment to moment. And that gap between who you are and who your best self is, is what life is about. You're trying to close the gap in every single moment. So um, with SMART goals, you know, your best self would be 10,000 steps. And let's say you do it one day. Woo, you met, you met it. Cool. The next day, woo, you met it. Woo. Well, let's say the third day, you only get 9,000 steps. In that culture of goal setting, you're going to probably feel like you failed. But in this concept of open goal setting, you want to have like a mindset that you work towards your goals and you say, how, how many steps can I get today? So it's like an open-ended thing with an idea that you want to get to 10,000, but the goal really, the way you phrase it is, how many steps can I get today? I really like that concept because I like to go for walks and I usually tell myself to walk one, one lap around my, um, around my neighborhood, which is about a mile. I walk my dogs, it's about a mile. Um, but there are some days where I don't do that and it's probably because I feel like that's going to take too long because I'm too busy. Um, so I think an open goal there would be just step out the door with your shoes on and see how far you go. And in that sense, I can do that. It's kind of like, um, how many push ups can I do today? How many minutes of, of meditation can I do today with the intention that I want to do one minute, but if I could go longer, I can go longer. Um, so you're not in pass fail mode. You're in just kind of a growth mentality mode. Like today, my intention, my goal is how far can I go, really, instead of 10,000 steps or one or two push-ups. Um, so that's what we want to focus on this week is looking at what didn't work in your last week. So what didn't work for me, um, let's see, I wrote in lessons learned. Oh, there's a lessons learned section. This is what I wrote. My wins were I... Um, contacted all of my clients from last year and got them re-engaged in therapy, got them re-engaged in coaching. That was one of my big goals for the start of this year. My second goal, um, my win was consistency. So that was on the, uh, I started strong. And my third goal was I wanted to stay strong with my protocols, which I did. So the lessons learned, the little section where it says lesson learned, um, I had, oh, I learned that compassion I learned compassion feels great when I miss 
when I make a mistake, so I'm missing the take, missing the mark. So having compassion and not shame and making it up if I miss. So for example, on Wednesday, I did not do my um, one minute of meditation for whatever reason. I don't remember why, but I really did have compassion that day for that reason. And I promised myself that the next day I would do two minutes to make up for it. So it was like a running tally rather than, um, oh, I missed it today and I failed. Won't, won't. I, I gave myself compassion and I made it up the next day. So if your goals are open enough to be able to do that, make sure you set it that way. So where you can make it up, have compassion for that day. You tried your best, add it to your next day. And then the other lesson learned, I, um, I realized this week that accountability helps goal setting. So it's kind of like a win-win for me to do these little Sunday check-ins with your goals. Um, I have a coaching group where I'm, you know, consistently trying to ask questions and um, engage with them about their goals in order to, you know, it's really going to help me. The more I think about goal setting, the more I'm going to goal set. So I wrote in the lesson learned, accountability helps when you have an audience. So that's why you guys are here. Accountability, if you want to join and, and, you know, write to me right now and I'll put you on the screen so you can, you can have that moment of accountability of saying your goals out loud and what you would like to see from yourself in this next week. Totally. Let's do it. Let's be vulnerable. And then, um, the third thing I learned this week was, uh, I was very creative in my pre input win. So I used that morning time and a lot of good things came out of this. I had some dreams that I wrote about that I haven't done that in a long time. I haven't, you know, really sat on those thoughts that I had during my dreams. I usually just wake up and get going. So it was really cool to see before my snow globe brain was shaken by external input um, to kind of process what is really deep down in my brain that I kind of overlook or numb out all day, every day. So that's the lessons learned that I had this last week. My next week goals, um, I want to organize the she shed. This is the she shed. So it looks really nice from this angle. But on the other angle, I have blankets that are all thrown around. I want to put some nice little smells in here to really get my senses working when I'm working with my clients. And there's a TV that I've been wanting to put up on the wall over here um, to do my notes and stuff, but I haven't done it in so long. So that's a big goal of mine that I want to do. Uh, I want to meditate early instead of waiting throughout the day. I noticed that if I didn't do my meditation in that morning session, I put it off, put it off, put it off because I hate it. So my next week's um, improvement is going to be do your two minute medit because next week is week two. Do your two minute in the morning. That's what you have to do. That's what I have to do. And then the next thing I would like to do, I want to use my, you remember I talked about energy, work, and love. Uh, have really good energy, figure out what your work goals are, and then love. Love is the third aspect of having a good, healthy life. I haven't really focused in on love, and my friends will attest to this. I have not checked in. I have not been a very good friend to a lot of people. So this week, one of my new goals is to check in and connect with friends. Um, so hope some of my friends out there see that. Uh, and I'm going to hopefully hold myself accountable to checking in if I don't call me out on it because I need to. <laughs> hey, Chloe River. Um, all right. So my next week's goals, and I'm just going over mine right now because um, I think it's helpful to see examples of what goal setting looks like, uh, to get excited and zesty about it. And um, again, if you guys want to share yours, just let me know. Um, oh, I forgot. One of the, the real big intentions I made in the last video for everybody to do is to create an identity that they want to embody throughout the month or the year. And my identity that I wanted to embody was Zesty Responder. And I just wanted to do a little quick follow up on that. Um, there were many moments this week that um, I had Zesty Re Responder in my mind. I woke up with that intention. I made sure to write it down in my planner every day. When I had those pre-input wins, I would write down Zesty Responder just so I'd remind myself this is who I want to be today. And I remember um, just little itty bitty things with my partner, you know, her needing something. And instead of like waiting for a second, I was actually a quicker responder and I got up with zest. Or 
um, with my clients. There are some times when I have too many clients booked in a row and I get up in between my 10 minutes of my clients and I stand up and I, you know, do a couple of up downs or something just to get my zest going. And um, sometimes I felt I didn't remember my zesty responder identity and I would just sit there and my body felt horrible in between clients. But when I remembered, hey, be a zesty responder, listen to my body, I got up, moved, did arm circles, did whatever it took. And, it, and you know, that identity, I didn't set those goals this week, but that identity helped me uh, do something in that moment, do something different than I normally do, which is just sit and freeze. So I hope you guys have figured out by now at least your identity and put it in your in your planner every week to remind yourself this is who you want to embody in every moment of every day. So this week, my goals are the same. To meditate uh, for two minutes, to do two push-ups because it's week two a day, to continue my paleo, to continue working out, to continue to have pre pre-input wins, and to journal every single morning. Um, those are my habits and skills for every single day. My It says, I am excited about... Um, I am excited about pushing myself in my goals and building my habits because, you know, they say it takes 21 days to build a habit. Well, here we are in day 10. So we're almost to the half po halfway point. No, is it the halfway point? We're almost at the halfway point. So if you can just hang in there, I know it's like running a mile. You know, that lap three, lap two slash three is the worst lap. And then when you get to lap four, and I'm talking about laps like it's high school when you had to run on laps. We're, you know, the lap four, you can see the finish line. You can see that you can do it. So, um, yes, Chloe, I'm going to save it. So I'll put it up later. Um, you're good. You'll see the beginning. Um, so when you do that lap, you're good. So right now we're in day 10 of 2021. You've started these goals. You're in 10 days of it. Try to see the finish line. You know, you only have to push yourself to maybe day 14. So Thursday, really push yourself to do this stuff by Thursday because then you'll start to see day 21, which is where it will become a habit. Um, and that's really cool. So that's my real big excitement. I'm just trying to fake it till I make it, actually. Um, I'm not that excited, to be honest, about pushing myself and pushing my habits. But I have to inject zest in there to convince myself to push it until day 14. And then I'll start to see the the end, you know, those end things. Those day, day 21 when it's actually a habit. One of the habits I really want to break is doom scrolling which I've really, really cut down on since day one of this year. And I can feel the cravings sometimes where I want to just scroll for no reason. And um, I have had to have many talks with myself, like just make it today, just make it today. Even sometimes just make it five minutes. Don't do it. Just put it away for five minutes. In five minutes, you can pick it up. And in five minutes, the craving's gone and I don't have to do it. It's literally like that until it becomes a habit and it will. I, I, I trust that in myself. I know that in stopping drinking, cravings go away around day 20, 21. All right. I'm also excited about Tuesday is my first day off in a long time. So I'm going to take myself golfing and hopefully maybe a friend or two to go golfing. And I'm excited that it's week two um, because I think week two kind of gets a bad rep. So I'm just saying I'm excited about it again, just to kind of fake it till I make it and then inject zest into week two. Week one, we're full of energy. It's like week two of school when you start school. Week one, you have your new planner and your new pens and it's cool. But then week two, you got homework and shit's real. So we're in week two. I'm injecting zest in that. We're excited about week two. Uh, we're not going to let this go under. Um, this is going to be a good week. So uh, it also has a to-do list. So again, health and fitness, I want to maintain paleo. I want to work out on my center app, which center app, if you guys don't know, uh, I know a lot of you guys are into Peloton and stuff like that, but center app is great if you want to in, uh, add some body weight uh, workouts. It's with Chris Hemsworth and all of his people. So it's really fun. It has meditation and it has eating stuff on there. Um, I really like my center app. So I do paleo, I do my center app, and then I'm adding walking. My family and friends, uh, to do is to connect with my family and friends this week. Remember, that's the piece that was missing in the first 10 days. My romance and relationships, uh, a weekly date night. I have kept to that. We're going to do it again this week. Um, fun and recreation is Golf Tuesday. Uh, personal development. I've really had a trouble filling this one out because I feel like 
I'm in constant personal development mode. Uh, so uh, I guess just continue being me. I don't know. Spiritual, meditate two minutes this week. So again, every week I'm increasing by one minute. Last week was one minute. This next week I'm looking forward to two minutes of meditation. Again, I hate meditation. It's awful to me. Um, really, I just sat there, closed my eyes, and did deep breaths for one minute. So I'm going to continue to do that for two, two minutes this week. And if I miss a day, have compassion and add it to my next day. So I'll have a four-minute meditation which still at this point is not is not bad. If I miss a week 32 meditation one day, so I miss a 32 minute meditation and have to add it to the next day, oh my God, I know I'm gonna struggle. So I'll have to figure that out. Just maybe not miss it. Um, and that's what I have so far in my to-do list. And again, when you do this, you want to write what this week's main goal is. So again, I wanna stay consistent so that I can build habits to week 14 or day 14 at least. And I'll start to see the dead, the end goal end goal for um, day 21, which will hopefully be a habit by then. And again, I'm going to give myself the reward of sidecar donuts. So um, I don't plan on doing a sidecar donut every week, but for now, it's motivating. <laughs> when you're doing paleo all week, there is nothing better than a good old donut that's hot and delicious. And I like the cake-based ones, so they're hearty. They're not, you know, fluffy. So um, figure out what your reward is. Hold yourself accountable. Don't just give yourself a reward just because you think you're a good person. No, you don't get it. You get to hold yourself back from your reward. So if I don't do my main goal, which is to stay consistent, and of course that's kind of a uh, subjective goal there. What does consistent mean to me? Well, to me, it means seven days of consistency in my habits and skills. If I don't do that, I don't get my donuts. So that's what I set for myself. Set it for yourself too. Um, and then make sure you do your priorities at the top. Write down what your priorities are this week. Maybe even set a one, two, three, four, like a number system to what, matters more than the other because otherwise we didn't go over this but there's an equation that's wonderful and lovely and it's this quality work equals time times focus times energy times what's important now which is when what's important now when to the consistent degree so if i were to write that out and i don't have a thing right now but Quality work equals time times energy times focus times what's important now to the consistency degree. And why this equation is important, if I were to write it out, that little block of energy times focus times what's important now. Let's say that you have a 1 to 100 scale, for example. You have 1 to 100 in energy. Let's say you woke up feeling 100. You got good sleep. You're eating really well. You're at 100. Now let's go to focus. You are on it. You know exactly what you have to do. Like I wake up and I'm like, oh, I've got to do my protocol. I got to do this. I got to do this and work. I know exactly what, and I don't have any distractions. I put all of my distractions aside. So let's say you're at a hundred focus. And then let's say you know exactly what's important now. You've written it down. You've prioritized what's important now. So you're at a hundred what's important now. So what's that? 100 times 100 times 100 is what? I think it's a million. So you're at a million units of that, how many minutes or hours or days of time are you going to need in order to do something great? Really, you only need one hour. Let's say you do a million times one hour, because remember, it's time times energy, focus, and um, what's important now. If you just do one hour at a hundred of all of those, oh my God, you're going to have a million units of quality work. You do that every single day. That's why the consistency is the exponent. If you do that every single day, shit, you're going to be unstoppable. You'd be like Oprah. I want in a million. Um, but if you, let's just take it to the worst case scenario. Let's say you wake up with a one energy, a one focus, and a one what's important now. You have no idea what's important now. You're just, you know, lazy all day. What is that? One times one times one is one. How many hours of time would it take for you to get a million units that you had in that first part of the equation? 
It would take you a million hours. So there's a whole range in there of what your numbers would be, but that's the extreme versions of it. So if you're at 100 everything, you have a, a million units times consistency or to the consistency C degree, you can do one hour of quality work and you'd have one million units of quality work there. But if you only had one, if you were led at a one energy, a one focus and a one one what's important now, then it's gonna take you a million times longer to do the quality work that you did in the first equation. So let's say you only have 50%. Let's say you're 50% of energy that you should be. So 50 times 50 times 50, what's that? I have no idea, I don't have a calculator out here, but you know it's a lot. Um, it will take, you know, maybe two hours of that kind of quality in order to get the quality work that you need. Now let's say that you did one, uh, two times two times two, that's eight to every single day. So let's say the consistency was every single day. And that's why I say, you know, my one minute meditation, if I did it one time, that's not gonna do anything for me. But if I do one minute a day times seven days, that's seven units of quality work that I've done for myself. Well, let's say I do one day of seven minute meditation, but I don't do it the rest of the time. Sure, it'd be great for that one day and I'd feel okay, but it's not gonna do anything for me long term. It's not gonna build a habit or anything like that. So that equation is super helpful in the sense that you don't have to move mountains. You don't have to be at 100 every single day. But what the most important part of that equation is, is the consistency part of it, because that's the exponation, ex exponential value of it. I love math, so that's why I'm really honing in on this. Uh, thank you, one in a million, 125,000. Um, if you were only to do, you know, a quarter of the units of energy, focus, and what's important now, if you were at 25 times 25 times 25, and then you did it every single day, your quality work would be so, so good, so good. So consistency is the important key there, keyword there. It doesn't matter whether it's two, 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 and you do it consistently, you're gonna get some really good quality work. Obviously, if you get 100, 100, 100 to the uh, everyday degree, you're gonna be the best self you could possibly be. Remember, arete is your best self, and you're constantly striving to reach arete, once you reach your arete, you move up arete and you just keep, that's what life is about. It's not about meeting here and you're done. It's about moving your arete up and continuing to chase it. So your good days is when you get the closest to arete, but arete always is a little further than what you can reach. Um, and you're just trying to close that gap. On your worst days, you're feeling crappy because you haven't even gotten close to arete, which is your best self. So every day you want to close the gap. If that's you know, one minute of meditation, I'm, I'm reaching just a little bit more of my arete, my best self. And that's the goal of your every day. So um, that's all I got. Nobody else is here to share. So I'm okay with that. I'm just going to share that. I appreciate you guys being here. I don't want to make this too long. Like the last one, it was like an hour and a half long last time. So I'm going to download this, put this on uh, Instagram and YouTube, YouTube. So share it with your friends. Hopefully you guys will comment and let me know how your goals went. Again, if you um, write it out or you share it with friends, share it with me, it's more likely that you're going to stay accountable to it because you're continuing to talk about it. And the more you talk about something, the more it's going to be on your mind. If you think about, I love Schitt's Creek, the less I think, the less I think about it, the less I watch it, the less it's on my mind. I don't think about it. But the more I watch it, the more I talk about it, the more I become a fanatic of it. So the same thing goes to um, you guys with your, with your goals. And Jay McDeezy wants to be on the live video. So let's do that. Let's join. Actually, no Jay McDeezy. Here we go. Waiting for McDeezy. This is Janora. She's going to come in just a second. This is the first time I've ever done this where you join with somebody. Hep Sarah, thank you for joining. I think, right? Hi, hi. Jay McDeezy's probably looking good, making sure he's, she's trying to figure it out. Oh, got it. Okay. We'll wait for her. Anyways, um, let's see. What else can I tell you? Sidecar Donuts. Still trying to get everybody to do it. Clever Fox Planners. Make sure you go online and check out all their colors. They have really cool colors. Uh, oh, I did want to tell you something. Um, Um, 
Yeah. Oh, Archer in a lab coat. We'll go. I requested. I don't know what to do next. Here we go. Go live. Send request. Let's see. Um, Archer in a lab coat. Actually, if if Janora gets on here, then what we'll do is we'll talk about that. <gasps> oh, hey. hi. Hey, Janora. Hey, everybody. Hi, Michelle. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. This is the wonderful Janora McDuffie, and hey, she everybody. is... She is so amazing. Um, she does some really great podcasts, and she's, uh, well, tell us, introduce yourself so everybody knows who you are. Uh, I am a graceful and curious cheerleader. <laughs> that is my identity <laughs> that speaks to me most in 2021. Uh, before being that, I have been a jack-of-all-trades, actor, voiceover artist, all things hopefully creative and happy to still at the underlying part of all of it, be a human trying to reach my arete. So happy to be Your arete, of, Yeah. Yes. Happy to be a part of this process. So thank you. Good. Michelle. Yeah. I'm excited because, um, you know, you joined the coaching group and you've been mm -hmm. a really positive member to have, you know, there's some people who really enjoy what you say to them and how you are vulnerable with them. It has people open themselves up. So I'm really glad that you're here willing to be the first sacrificial lamb here. Oh, wow. Sacrificial <laughs> lamb. That, that, that so, sounds serious. Uh, yeah, but I, well, I, I'm happy to lay, lay myself <laughs> down for the cause of greater humanity and, and growth of all of us, right? Because that's right. We're not alone right. in any of this. And I feel like I've been able to grow the more that I'm, I'm able to show um, the other parts of me that um, are in need of, of growth and love and community and assistance and coaching. So, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, do, I'll take one for the team. <laughs> you are one of the most self-developed person people I've I've met you ever since day one I've met you you're always about self-development how can I better myself and um, it's been on your mind for a long time so I appreciate you always you know pushing pushing the envelope there absolutely and my goal is to go from theory to action yes that is important <laughs> so I can get yeah all so the, tell us how the good stuff how, how did your first week go well, full week, how did it go with your goal setting? I know you set some goals. How did it go? What worked? Well, um, what worked was really watching your video. And, and developing and defining my identity. And my identity was based on two things. One being graceful with myself or giving myself grace when I don't meet goals. Um, I've got this inner voice that loves to come out and wreak havoc um, and not be nice in the process. Um, and um, yes, the, the lab coat, the lab coat part, the... Um, Archery with a lab coat. Archer with a lab coat. Yes. So yeah, tell everybody what that mean to you, meant to you because um, oh. those of you who have not seen the first video, I explained it there. But tell us in your words because it might come out different. Sure. So when I look back and feel like I didn't quite meet the mark, reach my goal, instead of sharing, that's what I named this voice that comes out, and it's just like you should have known better. Um, um, you suck basically because you didn't reach the goal and you think you're somebody you're supposed to be like, yeah, this, this actor, this personality. And look, if, if everybody knew the truth, like all these horrible things. So a way to look at something that happened in the past or, or just happened. Well, I guess it could have, it, yes, happened in the past. It could be five minutes in the past. It doesn't have to be like 20 years ago, but to figure out how to, improve if we look at it not based on this voice or Sharon or shame or guilt or whatever those human feelings that are attached if we could look at it like a scientist and a scientist looks at data and um, analyzes it from from a space of separation of not 
putting those feelings into it, but just analyzing what can I do better based on X, Y, and Z and not based on who I am or who my mom said I was or who Sharon in my mind is saying I am. But no, this is just the data right here. And how can I do better from that? So I really do like science and math just as subjects. And so it really resonated with me because I think I can do that. I think I can get into a lab coat and in those science shoes to look at things and how I can do better. Uh, because mm -hmm. Sharon is, is, is lead me down a rabbit hole <laughs> going <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> Apologies to all Sharons out there. I'm sure you're good people, but <laughs> it's true. You got to name your gremlins inside. It helps personify them as not you, not your best self. Yes. Yes. So that's good. I'm glad that you've named her and you can talk to her as though she's just kind of this negative, negative Nancy. This, well, I love yeah. that Sharon rhymes with Karen with the whole Karen <laughs> thing out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah how about that yeah the, the black ver the black version of karen is sharing yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you this week set goals and you feel like you were a scientist this week i do in that i was gentle and i do in that it, it wasn't personal when things just um well so far that was a great uh, analogy that you used as well. Week one is fun. Got my new pins, new equipment. Yeah. And all right, so now it's time to do the homework. So what resonated from your talk today was having open goals. Because yep. I feel like sometimes when you get very specific, that's when you lose me. Or that's when it just gets frustrating. Because as an artist, sometimes my goals aren't specific. Most times mm -hmm. my goals aren't specific or most times my goals are dependent on other people saying yes. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if I want to yep. be a series regular on a one hour drama, sure, that's my goal all day, but I still have to have people to say we want to hire Janora. So it's forcing me to have goals in the meantime that I can fulfill without somebody giving me the, the thumbs up that I could do that. So developing those goals become challenging but when they're open goals it is very helpful so yeah and i'll put the link to that article in the in, when i post this but i think particularly for your um career for you for being an actress and being in hollywood in the industry i think it's actually even more powerful to have op open goals like that concept of um let's just see how far i can go mm. like how freeing that is that it's no longer shame based that you didn't go to the specific goal that you asked that you want, you know, you kind of have an idea in mind. I would like to be a regular on something, I would, but if you wake up every morning and just say, how far can I go today with this? And if you're yeah. constantly in that, that cheerleader, that graceful cheerleader mode, you're good to go. Cause you're just cheering yourself on all day. I'm just cheering myself on all day. Cause I'm so good at doing that for other people. How can I, I turn that, encouraging positive light back to me so that that, yep. is a, that is a big goal and now that it's open it can take the shape of many things yeah but because I've gotten that far I'm now ready to jump into this so um, this is a, a planner Layla actually gave me that has remained just on the shelf until now and you with your Fox planner this is actually a Phoenix planner but it's very very similar in terms of how it's yeah. laid out and all the questions. I'm familiar with that one. Uh huh. So I have yet to fill it out because it's been so overwhelming but now that we've gone through week one and I'm, I'm still on this train and feeling good about it I'm my goal for next week is to specifically fill it out. But the other things would be just continuing to stay consistent with other things I've set up for this first week, including the eating, um, dropping the sugar, dropping the dairy, including the moving, yes, Peloton queen here. <laughs> yes. But, I, but making sure I stay consistent with it. So, yeah. And, and, oh, that whole, you put it as the pre-input win, keep that up, because um, that is really powerful. And then especially a week like this past week, I feel like there's this draw to stay connected to the news. Yeah. Because <laughs> Olympus is falling. Yes. But, but, but that shit in the veins 24-7 will bring you down. So, like, yep. being able to properly disconnect but also making sure that that's not how I'm starting my day. Yep. 
Yeah, because imagine if, like, we're, it's okay to have feelings about what's happening in the world, but to be inputted with feeling from the news or inputted with feeling from Twitter or Facebook from other people's emotions, it's not you. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's, that's, I think, where I decided, you know, I would like to really dive into what I feel and not what everybody else is telling me I should feel or, you know, a group census of what everybody's feeling. And in doing that, before I pick up my phone in the morning, I, it's really peaceful. Like my inner, if everybody would do that, we would not have the problems in the world that we do. Um, I yeah. think it's a lot of sheep mentality where, you know, you see what everybody else is doing. So, yeah. um, you know, don't be a sheep. There's that, um, I don't know if you've heard me say this, but uh, the metaphor of the buffaloes and the cows, there's a, yes, there's a, yes. yeah, there's a metaphor where, uh, when, you know, in this valley, these buffaloes and cows live, and when the storms come over, the buffaloes and the cow choose to respond differently to the storms. The cows start running away, hoping that they're going to miss it, and the buffalo charge at the storm, getting through it, you know, still suffering, but getting through it quicker. So I constantly think about that. Am I being a cow or a buffalo here? You know, so in my moment-to-moment -moment actions, am I being a cow by sitting or running away from what's painful? Or am I charging the pain, enduring the suffering, and getting yeah. through it quicker? And it's a constant, it's a constant question. It's a practice. Yeah. And um, one last thing to that is I call my, I, I find myself being slick, though, and this is what I'd like to implement in addition to the pre-input win is how I end my day. So I've been pretty good at not picking it up as the first thing I do. But I tell you, I am on it until it's time to leave it in the kitchen. And so um, that's not good either. Like the input, yeah. the pre-input before sleep. Yep. So yep. I, need, I need to guard against that too. And the police are after me. So I'm so <laughs> <laughs> You live yes, right Sharon. downtown, so it's all good. Yes. Sharon's like, she's um, trying to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, you know, I didn't go a lot into your bookends of your day, but that is considered one of your bookends is that, that, um, hour before you sleep, how are you setting yourself up for the next day? So, um, are you giving yourself that blue light, that digital sunset, um, an hour before you decide to go to bed? And that is so hard. It is a habit to break. You could feel the cravings. Like yeah. literally if I don't have my phone by me, I can feel myself. Like it's like my limb is gone. Itch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah, like all those things. It's like an addict, like having withdrawals. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that is a hard one. I think that has to be, be broken down into um, smaller, more reasonable goals because it is a really hard thing to get rid of. Yeah, but I'm giving myself grace. To, I, I recognize that that's an area of improvement. I'm gonna look at it as, like a scientist to figure out when I do not fully put it down in an hour, like what was happening, what could change with no feelings attached. Yeah. So that's so awesome. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready, Michelle. I'm ready. I appreciate you sharing that. I think yeah. that you putting it out there, you're very good at, um, what's that word? Abundance or the secret where you put it out in the world and it just comes at you. Manifestation. And manifestation. Right here. That's, that's what it is. Then guess what? <laughs> that's like me. Yeah, that's like me. <laughs> that's like me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm. I really appreciate you coming on here and being vulnerable about the things that don't work. And um, I really love your identity of being a graceful cheerleader. Um, you have the cheerleader down. You're just a natural cheerleader. But you're right. It is harder to be a cheerleader for yourself than it is for other people. Um, and it is a practice. So again, pulling yourself out. And being that, that, that scientist, we didn't even get to the archer part, but, you know, the archer is somebody who doesn't just do a one and done try. They try over and over and over, and they're just constantly doing it and going, looking at it and coming back and doing it again. So that's why I say, you know, if you are not that graceful cheerleader one day, look at it like, sci look at it like data. That was one bad archery attempt, and you wake up the next morning or even the next moment and try again. Yeah. Try, try yeah. again. And archery or the archer is able to do everything that they can control to, to, right. to make it reach. So yep. I will continue to do the things that are in my circle of control.
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, yeah. I'm here to help if you need anything or you need more. I know you're in the group, but, um, you know, I think the more you put yourself out there and the more you look at the ugly, the more, mm -hmm. the more you're going to make progress. I think that is where successful people are successful and non-successful people are not, is that they're not willing to look at the ugly. They mm. shove it, they hide it, they numb it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's all it is. It's just exposing yourself and then being that graceful cheerleader. <laughs> Yay. Well, thank you, Michelle, for this thank you. time. Thank you for your group. And thank you for all the, the love and wisdom you put out into the world. Yeah, thank you, too. All right. Well, okay. I'm going to end here. And I appreciate you. And um, hopefully we'll get to do this again. Other people will be able to do this. I'm hoping to do this every week until it becomes like habit. And then we'll do it every month. Um, and then people can just go back and rewatch it. So I appreciate you so much. All right. And I, you. I, I think I, I'm going to do this right. So you can have closing words without my face on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bye, Janora. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you to Janora. Thank you, everybody who's joined. I'm going to post this later. Um, and so you can rewatch it. Hopefully it's exciting to you. Remember um, that it is, is a process. It is not just a destination. It is not a failure if you did not get it done in every moment. Just keep being that. I love Janora's um, identity word. If you can kind of come up with some sort of a cheerleader identity too in yourself, um, you are your best coach. You should be your best fan. So um, work on that. You know, it's so easy to do that for other people, but we treat ourselves the worst. We are our worst critic. It does take practice to not do that to yourself. That's what therapy does. That's what coaching does is it teaches you to not rely on the therapist anymore. If, if you get a good one and you get a good coach, they don't want you to be with them all the time. They will teach you the skills that they have in order for you to be your own therapist and your own coach so that you don't have to go anymore. You have it. So, um, you know, just being here watching this and um, continue to, continuing to look at what you need to work on. Uh, you're doing the work. It's hard work to do. I always have this little cup right here. Um, I can do hard things. You can. Everybody can. So remind yourself, when it gets hard, I can do hard things. If you feel yourself not able to get up for the day and it's really a bad day, um, you know, do the hard thing of just standing up and stretching or do something that's within your control to make yourself that you pushed past that comfort zone. You don't want to sit in comfort. You want to push into growth and reach that arete, close the gap, moment to moment to moment. It's not just a day-to-day -day thing. It literally is every second, every millisecond, you're choosing your growth. So again, thank you so much to Janora. Thank you so much to all you guys who have commented down here and who have joined us. I will post this later. We do have a Facebook group called Perfectly and Perfectly Coaching Group. You can join, um, and we just get on there. It's free. We just get on there and just expose ourselves every week of what our goals are and what we want to accomplish and just kind of be that cheerleader and that zesty responder kind of a thing and remind ourselves to continue to grow. So thank you so much. Oh, shift day counseling. I want to meet you. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm asking, we'll just make it a little longer. Let's see. Did it work? Shift day counseling. There we go. Hey, Can you see me? Shift day counseling. Hi. What's your name? Michelle Shazan. You're a Michelle too? Yes. <laughs> nice to meet you, another Michelle. Thank Are you with you. one L or two? Two L's. Nice. That's the best way. <laughs> well, good to meet you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I wanted to just, you know, invite people to come on here and share their goals for the week. Do you have some goals you'd like to share? Actually, the only goal is still trying to get back in the swing of things after the Christmas holidays. <laughs> so continue to add a little organization to my life. Yeah, that's good. Do you have a planner? Do you have a, um, a way to keep yourself accountable? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, what, yes. what is your favorite yes. planner? Uh, Franklin Covey. Ah, yes. One of the old kinds. Is it the yeah. kind you have to buy the sheets every year? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's the old school. Nice. Thing. Nice. And are you pretty consistent with writing? What works for you? Uh, pretty consistent. Yeah, pretty consistent. Good. So if we were to look at, you know, one of the things that we talk about is looking at what works and what needs work. What do you, uh-oh, I lost her. 
she's gone. She she needs work. You need to work on uh, how to get back on here. That's what I think. Uh, let's see. If she doesn't come back in a second, then I will probably close down and then talk to her in private message. But I don't hear from her. Yep. All right. Well, let's do this again. Um, Shift Day Counseling. Michelle with two L's. Please contact me um, via message and let's talk. Let's do this. Let's get you on track and feel good about this next week. Um, and next Sunday, let's meet again, 4 o'clock. I'm ready. Let's do it. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you all later. Bye.